DeepSeek just dropped a new version of DeepSeek R1. All of a sudden, we saw the weights on Hugging Face, but nothing else, no information. And just today, we have some information on it. It is a pretty substantial update, although they call it a minor upgrade. And hold on one second, I need a sip of water. I'm bullish on agents, are you? Want this mug? Shop.forwardfuture.ai. In the latest update, DeepSeek R1 has significantly improved its depth of reasoning and inference capabilities by leveraging increased computational resources and introducing algorithmic optimization mechanisms during post-training. Outstanding performance across various benchmark evaluations, including mathematics, programming, and general logic. Now here's the important part. Its overall performance is now approaching that of leading models such as O3 and Gemini 2.5. This is a completely free, completely open source model by DeepSeek and competes directly with closed source frontier models by leading US tech companies. Let me show you some of the benchmarks. So in light blue, we have the previous DeepSeek. In this dark striped blue, we have the new DeepSeek. So on Amy 2024, we went from 79.8 to 91.4. On Amy 2025, we went from 70 to 87. On GPQA Diamond, 71 to 81. Live Code Bench, 63 to 73. Ader, 57 to 71. And Humanities Last Exam, 8.5 to 17.7. Now, if we compare it to O3 by OpenAI, it is actually quite close. Basically the same on Amy 2024, a little bit behind on Amy 2025, same with GPQA Diamond and Live Code Bench a few points, but then Ader we see a pretty substantial difference, 71 to 79. Surprisingly, Gemini 2.5 Pro, which I consider to be the best coding model out there, falls behind on pretty much every benchmark to 03. And artificial analysis did its independent analysis of the new DeepSeek and here's what they found. DeepSeek's R1 leaps over XAI, Meta, and Anthropic to be tied as the world's number two AI lab and the undisputed open weights leader. So it jumped from 60 to 68 in the artificial analysis intelligence index, which is their index of the seven leading benchmarks. And that's the same type of increase as we saw from OpenAI's 01 to 03. There has been no change in architecture. That's why we're not seeing R2. This is R1 V2. It's a large 671 billion parameter model with 37 billion active parameters. And it had a significant significant leap in coding skills, R1 now matching Gemini 2.5 Pro in the Artificial Analysis Coding Index, and only behind O4 Mini High and O3. Now, I have found the same thing. I've run a few tests with it, and one thing that I've seen is the amount of code it's willing to output for a single piece of functionality like the Rubik's Cube test or like the Snake game is pretty substantial, on par with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Now, another interesting thing is that the new version of R1 uses many more tokens to think than the previous version of R1. Check this out. R1 528 used 99 million tokens to complete the evals in Artificial Analysis Intelligence Index 40% more than the originals. The new R1 thinks for longer than the original. That's basically what it means. But Gemini 2.5 Pro is still using the most tokens, 30% more than R10528. Now here's why all of this is important. The gap between open source and closed source continues to shrink. DeepSeek R1, when it first came out a few months ago, was a huge leap in open source. It was really the first time we saw an extremely capable, extremely efficient, thinking open source model. But now with its upgrade, it is comparable to these leading frontier models. And also here's the other thing to keep in mind. According to artificial analysis, China remains neck and neck with the US. Models from China-based AI labs have all but completely caught up to their US counterparts. This release continues the emerging trend. As of today, DeepSeek leads US-based AI labs, including Anthropic and Meta, in Artificial Analysis Intelligence Index. And how did they squeeze all of this additional intelligence out of that same base model? Well, post-training. They continued to refine their reinforcement learning techniques, and they were able to squeeze more out of their original pre-training run. Now here's what that jump looks like. Here's DeepSeek January 2025 at 60, right below Claude 4 Sonnet, which just came out, and a massive jump to be right behind the OpenAI closed models. And on par, equal, 
with Gemini 2.5 Pro preview May 25. Now there are still a bunch of models that we haven't seen, including Grok 3.5, which according to XAI is gonna be really good, kind of different, we'll see. I think the thing I'm most disappointed in is Llama 4 Maverick, all the way down here. I had such high hopes for Llama 4 and they have been dashed. So of course I gave DeepSeek the new version with DeepThink on, that's the R1 version, the Rubik's Cube test. I'm using the same prompt as I used with all the other models that I've tested this on. Write a complete HTML JavaScript program using 3JS that renders a fully interactive Rubik's Cube simulation of any size up to 20 by 20 by 20. The user should be able to specify the cube size dynamically. The cube should be constructed accordingly with proper color-coded faces. Include camera controls to rotate the view. Allow for basic user interaction, such as rotating layers of the cube via mouse or UI buttons. Now, Gemini 2.5 Pro, the original one, nailed it. First go, no problems. Really was mind-blowing to see that. Then the new version of Gemini 2.5 Pro was able to do it again really well, even slightly better. So it thought for 328 seconds. That is multiple minutes of thinking and it's still outputting, but the thinking process is over. Let's look at some of these chain of thoughts. So it's basically restating what it's going to do, performance, it's asking questions, but note, we are going to have to update the positions of these stickers when rotating layers. And here it's asking about different meshes and layers. It's gonna to be too heavy. So it's really iterating over different approaches to solving this problem. And I believe it just finished. Yep, there we go. And the cool thing is you can run it right from here. Okay, well, I see all of these settings, but I don't see an actual cube. That's disappointing. Let me try copying it and doing it locally. Yep, so it looks like there is no cube. Let's see if we can get it to fix this. So first I'm gonna look at any errors and I see. So 3JS was not initialized. I've been having this problem lately with a bunch of different 3JS usages. So let me just try to get this fixed. Okay, so I fixed 3JS and that was all it took. And this looks quite good to me, actually. All right, let's see what happens if I click scramble. Oh, so close, so close, but nope. Still, nothing compares to Gemini 2.5 Pro on doing this test. So it looks like it scrambled. It didn't really scramble properly. Then it just solved itself. Let's click solve. And yeah, once again, the physics, the rotation just didn't work. All right, the next thing I'm gonna try is an advanced snake game. Not just a normal snake game, but let's do a more advanced version with different types of food, different types of power-ups, teleportation, all of this cool stuff. And it started, it's already going. And while that's working, let me show you a couple other interesting graphs. Now, this is Frontier Language Model Intelligence Over Time. This is by Artificial Analysis. This is the Intelligence Index Score. Here's OpenAI in black. Right here was GPT 3.5 to GPT 4. And then we had a couple minor leaps. This right here, this major leap, is when we had thinking models, then we had a couple minor leaps. And so you can see there are a couple major instances where we had these big leaps and then a few minor leaps. Now here's deep seek in dark blue. We can see right there a couple minor leaps and then all of a sudden huge, huge leaps at the beginning of this year when deep seek R1 came out. And another very nice leap right there with the new version of R1. And if you're wondering which provider to use for the fastest inference speeds, here it is. Fireworks is number one. Output tokens per second, 253 for this new DeepSeq R1 variant. Now the context window on DeepSeq is still relatively low. On DeepSeq proper, we're getting 64,000 tokens. On Fireworks and some other inference providers, we get 164,000. Here's some pricing options with Fireworks being at the top and DeepSeq being towards the bottom. All right, so interestingly enough, the advanced snake game only took 22 seconds of thinking. So we are going to create a visually enhanced version of the classic game Snake using Python, define classes, so really just setting up how it's going to actually construct the game. Now, the output of the code took a long time. Look how much code there is. Quite a bit. And it comes in at 1,117 lines of code. Let's see if it works. Oh, it does not. Name error, name player snake is not defined. Let's see if this is an easy fix. So I'm gonna throw it back into deep sea, continue the conversation. Hopefully this does not take a long time. All right, it's done, let's give it another try. Oh, and it just ends instantly, but it's definitely there. Unfortunate, unfortunate, okay. Well, I'd say I'm a little unimpressed with this new release, just based on the few tests I've given it. Now, according to the benchmarks, it's a huge leap, 
that's great, but I usually like to see it accomplishing a little bit more with my tests. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.